Now for the ladies. If you brought a purse with you, that purse should never be placed on the table. It has been probably on the floor at some point in time, so there might be a lot of bacteria on the bottom of that purse, and you don't want that up on the table where people are eating. So place it in your chair, or if you have uh, an arm on your chair, you could hang it on the arm, or you can place it on the floor. If you place it on the floor, make sure that it's pushed up under the table so no one will trip over that purse, especially guests and servers. Now, a little bit about what to do with your napkin. This is a dinner napkin, so as soon as you sit down, you want to unfold your napkin and you want to place it in your lap. Now, we don't need to give it a healthy shake, do we? So unfold it to the point where it's folded half in two and place the folded side up next to your body so that you can blot when you need to. Now, I said blot. I didn't say rub and scrub, did I? Okay, so just blot when you need to blot your mouth. If you want to leave the table and you do plan on returning, then there is a silent service code that would let the server know that you are going to be coming back and that server will not remove your food until you do get back if you place your napkin in the right place. So that would not be back on the table if you are planning on returning. That would be just folded loosely, placed in the seat of your chair or across the arm of your chair or if there's no arm across the back of your chair. That tells the server you are returning. But when you have completely finished eating, your napkin does go back on the table to the left-hand side of your place setting like so. Not folded, but just loosely to the left-hand side of your place setting. Never in your plate. If you put it in your plate, that would place you right into the hall of shame. Okay. So now we know what to do with our napkins. Let's talk about all of these utensils now. A good rule of thumb is to work from the outside in when deciding on what utensil to use. So in this case, we have a cocktail fork, and that means that we have a little appetizer that we're going to enjoy. And it might be in a container, something like this, a little bit of crushed ice underneath, maybe a crab meat cocktail you would enjoy that appetizer and when you finish that you would not leave that utensil in the container you would put it on the under plate when you had finished your next course then again we're working our way from the outside in is would be your soup course now how do we eat soup properly okay. we don't shovel it toward us we spoon it away from us. Spoon it away from you, bring the spoon to your mouth, and sip from the side. In fine dining, your soup would probably be a consomme or a cream soup, and so that would make it easier. If it's a chunky vegetable soup, you wouldn't have any choice but to put most of that spoon in your mouth, but for a consomme or cream soup, spoon away, sip from the side of the spoon. When you have finished with your soup, don't leave that soup spoon in the soup bowl or soup cup. Place it on the under plate toward the back, and that would tell the server that you have finished. Now, in fine dining, we have several courses, so we might have a fish course that would be next. But also in fine dining, the portions are fairly small. So let's just say that we've been served a small piece of fish. We're going to enjoy that with our fish knife and our fish fork. Now I'm going to show you how to properly hold your utensils in just a second and I'm going to show you a couple of different methods. All right, now we have our salad and it's okay to cut lettuce in spite of what you've heard. It's okay. You know, I've had some pieces of lettuce that were so large I couldn't possibly get those in my mouth without cutting them. So that's why we're given a, a salad knife. All right, let's move on to our entree. Let's just pretend that we have a nice piece of filet here. Getting hungry? 
So we have our entree knife and we have our entree fork. This is where I'm going to show you a couple of ways to use your utensils. I'm going to talk about the continental style and I'm going to talk about the American style. I'm even going to throw in a little bit about an Asian style. Let's start off with continental holding the knife in the right hand, the fork in the left hand. The tines of the fork are down. You have your forefinger on top for leverage, the same with your knife. You cut off one piece at a time, and with continental, you do not put your knife down. You continue to hold it in your right hand, and you convey the food to your mouth with your fork with the tines down. Now, I often have the question asked, oh, what if I have English peas? How could I possibly eat English peas with the tines of the fork turned down? Well, what do we usually have with English peas? Mashed potatoes. There's your glue. Okay. So you just press a few mashed potatoes onto the back of your fork. Then you can scoop some English peas into those mashed potatoes and it sticks together like glue. Then you convey and you can eat it very easily. With the continental style, if you want to rest, you want to take a drink of your beverage or talk to the other people at the table. The resting position, and this is part of a silent service code for servers, the resting position for Continental would be the fork crossed over the knife with the cutting edge of the knife toward the center of the plate. This says, I am not finished yet, please don't take my plate. And in fine dining, servers do know these styles and they do know the positions of the utensils and they can read and tell what to do by how you leave your utensils. If you have finished, completely finished with a course, the I am finished position for Continental is the fork in the middle of the plate, the knife above the fork, cutting edge again toward the center of the plate, tines of the fork down, and let's just think of the clock, about 20 after 10. So the bottom of the handles at 20 and the top at the 10, okay? Just the face of a clock, if that's a good way to remember the, the finished position for your utensils. Servers do know that finished position too. Now let's talk about the American style of dining as far as your utensils. We start off the same way in holding our utensils. But with either style, we want to keep our elbows close into our sides. Cut off a piece of food. Place your fork toward the top of the plate. Cutting edge of the knife toward the center of the plate. When we do that, then with American, we switch the fork over to the right hand. At the same time, we're turning the tines of that fork up and then we are picking up the food and conveying the food to the mouth. With the resting position, with the American style, place the fork toward the center of the plate, leave the knife toward the top of the plate, the fork with the tines up. That says, I'm resting, I'm not finished, please don't take my plate. But if you have finished and you were using the American style, just move the knife down toward the center, right above the fork, and that says I'm finished and I was using the American style of dining. Only one little bit of difference here between continental and American with the I am finished position, and that is that the tines of the fork are turned up for American. Now, I mentioned that I might throw in a little bit about the Asian style, and I did learn this while working in Thailand, and this is even in a formal setting. In a lot of your Asian countries, they use a large spoon and a fork. Now, we like to think a lot of times that they use chopsticks all of the time. They do not. In Thailand, they use chopsticks only for noodles. Other than noodles, this is the way they dine. They take the fork and they pick up the food and sort of push it over into the big spoon. And then you eat from the spoon. 
and it works very well.